Parshat Yitro, it's the famous event that changed Kla Yisrael's life, changed really the world's history. And that is the experience of Mamad Har Sinai, the experience of receiving the Torah, where literally the heavens opened up, where it was crystal clear that Kodesh Baruch Hu spoke to mankind and gave us the Aser Sedibros, the Ten Commandments. And when we take a look at this event, it's an event with, with an earth-shattering event, as the Torah describes, we're in source number one, the last of the Aser Sedibro, you shall not covet your fellow's uh, house, you shall not covet your fellow's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, nor anything belonging to your, to your fellow. And we have now, we step back and we once again look at the description that we had in the 19th chapter. We once again have the 20th chapter where the entire people saw the thunder and the flames, the sound of the chauffeur and the smoking mountain. The people saw and trembled and stood from afar. They said to Moshe, you speak to us, we shall hear. Let God not speak to us lest we die. The experience of Mamad Ar Sinai was an overwhelming experience. It, it blew their senses. They were afraid to listen anymore. Moshe said to the people, Do not fear, for in order to elevate you as God come, so that the awe of him shall be upon your faces, so that you shall not sin. The people stood from afar, and Moshe approached the thick cloud where God was. And in a real sense, this is the end of the Mamad Ar Sinai experience where the people were afraid to come close, and Moshe Rabbeinu himself comes close and receives the rest of the Torah. But the parsha doesn't end here. The parsha continues. And it's in the continuation of the parsha that this is where, Mir Hashem, I want us to dwell today to ask a very basic question. And the answers to this question, I think, are the most fundamental aspects that we need to integrate into our lives on a daily, if not hourly, basis. Hashem said to Moshe, So shall you say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You shall not make images of what is with me, gods of silver and gods of gold, shall you not make for yourselves. And in a real sense, this is part of the continuation of the Mamad Ar Sinai experience. Moshe Rabbeinu is told, If the Jewish people have seen so clearly HaKadosh Baruch Hu in front of their eyes, so recognize this, take this reality with you wherever you go, and don't make any other gods. Live a life, live a reality of God alone. The way the Art Scroll Stone Chumash describes it is consequences of Sinai. Recognize are the results of the, of the Har Sinai experience. And that I can understand being part of the... Uh, taking the Harsina experience into our lives. But here we find where the bracket is, verses 21 to 23, which is very fascinating. It seems to be a section which has no place here, but rather, and this is the Torah Semis' question, but rather in the section of building the Mishkan, where we find here an altar of earth, a Mizbeach Adama shall you make for me. When you make a Mizbeach, make it for me, from uh, from the earth, and you shall slaughter near it your elevation offerings and your peace offerings, your flock and your herd, wherever I permit my name to be mentioned, I shall come to you and bless you. And when you make for me an altar of stones, do not build them hewn, for you will have raised your sword over it and desecrated it. You shall not ascend my altar on steps, so that your nakedness will not be uncovered upon it. The question I'd like to ask today is a very basic question. Many answers are given. I want to take a look at a specific Mahalach in Yerzah Shem today. And that is, what is the Mizbeach doing here at the conclusion of Mamad Har Sinai? What are we to learn from these details of not putting iron on it, of not having steps on it? How is this a directive for each and every one of us post the Mamad Har Sinai experience? And what I'd like to try to argue today, Amir Tzashem, on three levels, the three levels we've spoken about in the past of the Ma'aral, 
where everything has to be in three dimensions. Ben Adam Lamako between man and God, Ben Adam Lachavero between man and fellow man, and Ben Adam Laatzon between man and oneself. That this section of the Mizbeach Adama, and particularly this last verse of not making steps, but rather there was a ramp, and not making steps to the altar, is teaching us how to take the Harsinai experience, the Mamad Harsinai clarity of closeness to God, and how are we able to integrate it into our lives so that the, the mitzvah of Zechiras Mamad Harsinai, the command to remember Harsinai experience, is not just saying this to remember it, but there is indeed a way to live it and to be able to take the experience and make it part of each and every one of our psyche and the dynamics of our lives. Before we enter into specifically these three dimensions, I'd like to focus in on just the Rashi on this last Pasuk, raise a technical question on this Rashi, and then we'll begin, Mirza 